As the COVID-19 pandemic rages on in most parts of the world, how are Agilists finding meaning and purpose in these troubled times? How can we connect, inspire, and support each other? In days gone by, Caravan Sarai's provided rest, recovery, and community for travelers along the ancient Silk Road. Similarly, we hope that our Agile Caravan Sarai episodes will provide rest, inspiration, and hope. We hope each episode will remind us of our shared Agile values and thus bring us closer together. In past episodes, we've heard from Agile Manifesto authors like Jim Highsmith, Kent Beck, and Alistair Coburn. We've connected with captains of industry like Michael Kara from Nationwide Insurance. We've also heard from global Agile titans, including Rashina Hoda and Evan Leyburn from Australia and Naresh Jain from India. As we begin to see the glimmers of hope for the end of the pandemic, Agilists continue to respond with resilience. This is a time for transformation. I invite you to join me as we continue our journey together. I'm Sanjeev Augustine, and this is Agile Caravan Sarai. Max Keeler is the Chief Projects Officer and Project Lead for Investor Island at the Motley Fool. His specialty is Agile Project Management. Over the last 25 years, Max has worked at the Motley Fool in a variety of different positions, including VP of Business Processes, VP of Project Management, and the Head of Global Operations. I've known Max since 2007 when we helped his team get started with Agile Methods. Max and his crew quickly evolved into Agile experts themselves. Since then, they've pioneered many advances in Agile, including with Agile Portfolio Management, and in particular with Agile Performance Management. When he's not on Investor Island, Max is a guitarist, a crossfitter, and a video gamer. Max Keeler. So we have a few questions for you in a second, but if you could just introduce yourself to the listeners and uh, tell us your role at The Motley Fool. I, for one, have known you for over a decade, maybe coming up on Mm -hmm. two decades. It's been a long time. uh... Yeah, uh, my name is Max Keeler. Uh, I've been with The Motley Fool for over 25 years now. So one of the original employees uh, and have been with them through a lot, um, a lot of different phases, um, a lot of different, you know, hardships and successes. Um, I've learned a lot along the way, uh, about, uh, 15 years ago, um, or so I introduced, um, agile to the company, uh, with your help actually. Um, and it was a big, kind of transformative uh, experience for our company. Um, and since then, I've been in kind of my role is sort of what needs to be done. Uh, I've taken various management positions, sometimes more hands-on development positions. Um, currently, I'm kind of leading our mobile charge at the company. Um, and um yeah, I've, uh, I've I've seen a lot, but still have a lot to learn. That's for sure. So I love how you you sum that up. Certainly, we all have a lot, lot to learn, Max. So let's dive into our first question. And everybody on this uh, podcast has been looking at what they're about to say from or looking at what they're saying from the perspective of the Agile Manifesto, um, signed twenty years ago. This February was the twentieth anniversary. So the first question for you is, you know, given that Agile has been around for twenty years, and you yourself have been doing Agile for quite a while with your colleagues at the Motley Fool, what are some of your reflections on the Agile movement over the last decade or decade and a half? Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, you know, just looking back today, uh, it's really pretty interesting. But you know, kind of, I, I think. The, the way that I see it beginning is sort of a, I mean, I, I think it came out of an exasperation, um, you know, where, where people sort of started realizing that software development is just very different than other industries and, and treating it as a typical kind of manufacturing construction type um, you know, uh, job, uh, what, while seemed rational just turned out not to be the case um 
and it also kind of i think exposed sort of a dichotomy between you know programmers and management that wasn't that wasn't healthy um and that uh and sort of out of that came out of that frustration i think came the manifesto and so a manifesto is like a you know, a de almost like a declaration of, of independence or of grievance. <laughs> and that's what it is. I, I think it was like, this sucks. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, we've been working or, you know, nights and weekends to create things on impossible deadlines that people aren't even using. Um, and that's just, just no good. Uh, and so out of that, I think common feeling of exasperation came the the agile movement was like please treat us like people we want to be involved we need to do things differently mm -hmm. we think a shorter a more you know kind of results focused adaptability throwing being willing to throw plans out the window is 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 just the way to go um and that really resonated with me um when i first started attending some of these agile conferences and i was like that really makes a lot of sense this is just different um and uh so so I, that still is this like that kind of um you know that 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 sense of you know a software development isn't can't just be a kind of order taking kind of march down and 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 just like heads down, do stuff all the time. I think that's still relevant today. Um, and even if, if you know, things have, have changed, the, the idea that companies are trying to put out software as fast as they possibly can, it's probably more the case now than it was before. Um, so I think that spirit still, you know, lives on and needs to live on. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that that that's great. As far as, you know, and I'm sure you've heard this from other guests is it, the problem is, is it's just sort of become the new normal in a lot of places where, um, you know, you, you have, um, uh, sort of, you, you can have the same dogmatic kind of, you have to follow it this way because it's agile. Well, that's not the point. The point was, you got to follow it this way because it's working <laughs> and um yeah. and so sometimes i think you, you see organizations go off back on the like there's got to be this way you've got to do da, da, and sort of that dichotomy starts to sh yeah. you know, form again and respond um, to past dogmatism with your own with our own dogmatism <laughs> yeah and and um and 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 it's just the it's the nature of things at some point is that you yeah. kind of need that you know, and once you start to optimize and really get it down and do it really well, then that's the way you want to do it. And when people do it differently, then you're like, well, why? That's crazy. Um, you have to do it this way. Um, so just always checking back to, oh, is, is this working? But obviously that gets harder if you're a large organization with, you know, hundreds, thousands of, of yeah. software developers. Yeah. It's like, so, so it's, um, it's kind of it's it's kind of interesting. I also feel like that unifying voice of like agile's kind of disappeared a little bit. Um, where uh, you know, as as you know, and and software development is much better because of it. And so it's almost like now it's the new new normal is better than the old normal for sure. But awesome. that new normal still has some problems in its own. But thanks um, for that answer, Max. Yeah. So I I want to come back. Uh, to your thoughts on the future, but we'll do a quick segue right now to ask you our second question, which is how are you doing personally in the pandemic? Now you talked about your colleagues at the Mar Mar Motley Fool and challenges, I'm sure. Yeah, challenges. yeah. Um, a lot, a lot, a lot going on with it. I, I was never a fan of working from home. I was always, didn't really get behind that movement of like, I was like personally, I mean, I wasn't mad if other people did, but personally, I was like, I, I like going to the office, you know, <laughs> I like going to work yeah. and I like coming home. Um, <laughs> and, um, and so the transition has been 
uh, to that was was sort of at first it was like okay well that makes sense because I don't want to get sick and I don't want to get other people to be sick but now it's I almost feel like it's 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 you know what do they say it takes 30 days for a habit I mean this has been two years and um so it's pretty deeply you know it's deep in there now where it would seem strange to go back it really would um I still would like to but it would seem strange um I think you know I, I've spent there's been a lot of pluses um and I think we've chatted and you can relate you could I've spent a lot more time with my family um I um certainly just have more time I've been you know I've been try, trying I've probably more productive um in some ways um you know the the challenge for me has just been I, I guess the way that I put it is just, you know, I, I have to deal with myself a lot. <laughs> so, so, uh, you know, just like, it's just me and, and, you know, me down here in this, in this basement. And so, you know, it, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it just, it takes an extra level of discipline that can be exhausting sometimes. Um, and I'm not sure, like, you know, when I take breaks or when I take a day off, I just, you know, i certainly get support around doing that, but I just don't know when, you know, so, so it's, it's, it's uh, the, the unstructured nature of it is, has been kind of uh, difficult for me, but, but uh, yeah, I personally, I would like to, I'm maybe one of the, in the minority, but I'd love to go back to the office. <laughs> yeah. I don't know yeah. if it's going to happen though. So at least part of the time is what, what I'm hearing you say. At least, and I, I would probably be like, well, I live in your office, so I mean, the, the what used to be our office. So, you and, know, if we opened up somewhere in, but you know, Bethesda, where it was like a two-hour drive, I wouldn't be that excited. But you know, if it's it's literally like a you know, twenty-minute walk for me, so. And it's an incredibly designed office, right? It's wonderful with all the perks and a great working space. So it seems. Yeah, like yeah, that, it, it was an, an incentive. Advantage. Yeah. yeah to go so, into Silicon then, yeah. It's not like you're going into the cube sweatshop and type in atmosphere. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. So on to our third question, um, inflection point for the Agile movement. You talk about the history of Agile uh, coming out of a sort of protest, if you will, at the, in, mm -hmm. at the way that people, developers or software, software development and software yeah. developers are being treated and not being uh, given due consideration as we go forward, uh, I, uh, there seems to be some of that as well. I mean, and it's not just software developers, it's just people yeah. in general are saying, hey, we want more of a voice in decisions that are being made. There's a whole great resignation thing going on where people are mm -hmm. revaluing their lives. And uh, there's this move towards digital first. There are new technologies mm -hmm. and technology platforms coming. You and I have talked about blockchain and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, so what are your thoughts about uh, you know, how Agilists can add value, support each other, and support our organizations in this brave new world as we march towards this next normal. It's not a new normal, but it's a next normal. Yeah, well, well, in some ways, the, the role that is the sort of, um, you know, scrum master slash project manager slash, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, is more important than it's ever been. Yeah. Right. And so the opportunity is actually pretty, pretty big, I think, um, you know, kind of facilitation, um, organization, alignment, all that stuff. It's like, it's, it's harder than it used to be. So there's, there's probably more of a demand for it. And, uh, you know, Trello boards are only going to take you so far. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'd be optimistic for anyone kind of thinking about that space i think the demand's going to grow for that it certainly has it at our company and the the value that it adds is is higher um and so that's good news right um i think as far as you know kind of agile itself so that's just like you know that's that's a little different from agile that, but but related um yeah. yeah but but as far as like agile itself it's it's unclear like um i i do find i'd always kind of have preached sort of situational 
um, practice, you know, people are like, should I do Kanban or Scrum or Waterfall? Or blah, blah, blah. It's like, it just depends on your situation, right? Um, and so understanding, you know, what are the common situations now and what's most applicable to them is really the, the question. Um, and so, you know, um, I, I'm actually seeing some, uh, so, some rallying cries to go back to more of a waterfall process. Really? Um, yeah, where you really like flesh out the requirements up front and, you know, and, and then implement and then, you know, like giving more time for design and architecture and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and I think part of that is some pendulum. It's like, yeah. it's been so sidelined that it's, it's uh, the, the appeal of it is, is more than it's ever been. Um, and there's no denying like a well-architected solution, a well-designed solution is great. Um, it's just, you know, it's hard to do. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and easy to get wrong. So I, but I am seeing some of that, particularly in the, um, uh, the big data field where people mm. are, are, are dealing with, you know, just such massive amounts of, um, you know, kind of data and processing that, uh, you know, mistakes can be costly yeah. and time consuming. So, um, but then on the other hand, you know, I, I think you still have a lot of, um, you know, kind of that, you know, the stand up, all this stuff is just like, not is, is now just part of things like the daily stand up is I think almost everywhere that I've been. Institutionally. You know, so. um, and so those little pieces are still there because the communicate can't go wrong with some, you know, a little bit of communicate daily communication, but the whole like sprints, what's in the sprint? Is there a demo at the end of the sprint? Da, 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 da. It maybe doesn't make as much sense in certain cases. I, I You're seeing smaller teams do more in some ways. And then you're seeing huge organizations like Facebook and Google and Apple that just have, you know, and Amazon that have you know, tens of thousands of employees. Yeah, it was agile, right, for them. Uh, I, I think you see, I, I can't remember, I did read an article about how Facebook is just, they basically just don't do it anymore. <laughs> you know and so um the, the 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 what's the next kind of rallying cry is going to be interesting and and uh look forward to hear what that's going to be awesome so a little bit of un uh, uncertainty actually it sounds like there's a lot of uncertainty about where we are headed so I appreciate yeah that. so that is a mix of uh, optimistic about the need for the, the kind of skills that typically people that associate themselves with agile bring um but as to how we all come together around like something, I, got not, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that, uh, some balanced note, both positive and somewhat uh, balanced. I appreciate your thoughts, Max. And thank you for joining me on the uh, Agile Caravan Sarai. Yeah, thanks for having me.